Welcome readers. Today on Book Chat, Casey and I are diving into the book, There's Someone Inside Your House. We are also comparing it to the Netflix movie adaptation. Stay tuned. Today's episode is sponsored by I Found This Great Book, a directory of black mystery authors featuring over 580 titles. If you're a fan of audiobooks like me, browse the 175 books in the directory that are available now in audio format. Browse by author, style of mystery, including hard-boiled, cozy, supernatural, and more, or even browse like in a bookstore by scrolling through the books until you see cover art that jumps out at you. Visit the special link especially for Shelf Addiction listeners by visiting ifoundthisgreatbook.com forward slash shelf addiction to find your next favorite mystery support shelf addiction by supporting our sponsors so head on over to i found this great book.com forward slash shelf addiction and peruse the directory of black mystery authors the link is also in the show notes Hey everyone, I'm your host Tamara Ford and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Participate in this discussion by joining the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official. I hope to hear your thoughts on today's topic. You can always find me and Casey on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That would really help me out and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including after shows and more. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come on over to Patreon and sign up. Without further ado, let's get started. We've got a lot to cover today, so we are going to jump right on in. Joining me is feature co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. Hey, hey. I know I always say that, but I love it here. (laughs) (laughs) Love having you here. You won't believe this, but this was actually worse yesterday, (laughs) the day before yesterday. It's bad. So I'm sipping water and tea. And I might pop a lotions in my mouth. I might hit mute, all of the above. But I'm here. We're going to do this podcast. She's here. <laughs> She's doing it. She's doing this for you. Yeah. So, oh, sorry in advance, you guys. Hopefully, it's not too distracting and you can still get into what we're talking about. Because mm-hmm. this will be a fun discussion today. Yeah, it will. So today we are going to go back to what we were doing a couple months ago. and We are going to compare a book to its movie adaptation. Yes. Yeah. So this is an interesting one. And we did it, especially we picked this because it's the Halloween time. You know, it's fall. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you guys are hearing this on November 3rd or something like that. But yeah, we are recording this on Halloween weekend. It's Friday night. (laughs) And uh, let's tell you about the book. So we are discussing There's Someone Inside Your House, written by Stephanie Perkins. It was Mm -hmm. first published September 26, 2017, published by Dutton Books by Young Readers. The audio book was published Mm -hmm. by Listening Library. The hardcover came in at 287 pages, and the audio book, Unabridged, came in at nine hours and 26 minutes, narrated by Bonnie Turbin. Now, Casey, would you please yes. share the synopsis? Yes. It's been almost a year since Makani Young came to live with her grandmother, and she's still adjusting to her new life in rural Nebraska. Then, one by one, students at her high school begin to die in a series of gruesome murders, each with increasing and grotesque flair. As the body count rises and the terror grows closer, can Makani, can Makani oh my God, I'm so sorry. Can Makani survive the killer's twisted plan? Da, da, da. Is that so, it? <laughs> that's it. Lord, short okay. And sweet and to the point. I guess Do like, this give... book was supposed to be short and sweet and to the point. It was not. It was not. Do you want to do you want me to explain why we picked this or how we picked yeah, this? Yeah, go okay. yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. So many, many moons ago. I read Stephanie Perkins and it was very, very cute 
fluffy, sweet, young adult rom-coms, Anna and the French Kiss, Lola and the Boy Next Door, you know. And then I never read anything else by her ever again, just because I didn't have enough life. So we were looking at things to do. And I saw that Stephanie Perkins had written this book and that it was a new movie out on Netflix. So I went like 10 years without reading anything by this author. And then I was like, oh, she has something out on Netflix. Let's read it and watch it because it's a thriller and it's Halloween. I'm sorry. Apparently, I'm just like really bad at picking things for us to read. Like, like I'm on a winning streak of not good stuff. So I, I apologize. Hey, you can torture me later with other shit. Like you can't even tell though. Something looks good from the outside and then it's not good on the inside. You can't tell. Not at all. <clears throat> okay. So my first impression of this book after I finished it was like, honestly, that took way too long to get going. Like the setup for this book was like half mm-hmm. the book. I'm like, it was too much. Well, they discovered who the killer is at the 50% point. Cause as soon as I discovered it, I checked my mark in my ebook and I was like, wait, literally at like 51% of the way through the book. And we now know who the killer is. What the yeah. fuck are we going to do for the second half of the book? And well, he goes around killing more people and it's just yeah. crazy. And yeah. It's just this slasher. It's like a teen mm-hmm. slasher story. Okay, but it yes. wasn't well told, in my opinion. Like, uh, like okay, I know we usually don't compare it to the book this fast, but in the book, in the I mean, to the movie, excuse me, but in the movie, mm-hmm. they pretty much jumped right in with someone dying. Bam, someone died. That's a different person than who died in the book. Um, mm-hmm. but we didn't have to go and hear Makani's long ass sad story at the beginning. <laughs> We didn't have to, you know, Mm -hmm. the way her history was fed to us in the movie was smarter than the book Mm -hmm. because, you know, we kind of got flashes and then we got the story. This, it kind of like everything was set up and it's like, well, what did the girl do? You know, her grandmother is all wacky. It was just so much time with Mm -hmm. that. And then so much time with Mm Ali in this relationship. I'm like, okay, is this relationship even fucking important? Or no, I don't know. <laughs> I d- <laughs> Why <Yeah>. a man? <laughs> Why a? It is so teenage angsty, and I guess that comes from her rom com years. Although it's a very different type of rom com. I don't know. I remember thinking her other books were just like super cute, and this one, the relationship is kind of cute, but also just very over the top, very annoying, very much just like, come on guys. I didn't really? think the relationship was cute at all. So at first with the descriptions of everyone, I'm like, so does Ali have the pink hair or did mm-hmm. someone else have the pink hair? It took me like a couple chapters to figure out who was who just in how they described the little friend group. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, so she slept with this dude all summer. And mm-hmm. then just stop talking to him. I'm like, what the fuck? This is lame as hell. Like, what was your reason exactly? Like, it was dumb. Miscommunication. Was they looked dumb. into each other's eyeballs across the room and miscommunicated and then ignored each other for months. And I'm mm-hmm. just, yeah, can we kill this trope off? Like, just, no. just kill off the miscommunication trope. I mean, at least give me something good to, like, believe happened. Like, maybe... You saw him with someone and you misinterpreted what you saw or, you know, I don't know. An ex approaches you and threatens you. I don't know. Something other than we didn't really talk about it. It just happened and Mm -hmm. you both suck. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's what it is. They both just suck at everything. They can't communicate. They are really terrible to their friends. They're not really smart or kind to their family members. They lie a lot. I guess typical yeah. slasher movie stuff, maybe, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, to give credit when credit is due, I was impressed to see that the main character was brown, the brown girl. 
Mm-hmm. You know, she's a mixed black and Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, kind of like Barack Obama. But <laughs> they made that joke in the book. Yes, they also they do, right? made the jokes where, um, you know, they're like, "Who? Oh, the killer's targeting all these people. What makes you so different?" She goes, "Well, I'm black." Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, "Yeah, I didn't want yeah. to point that out, but that does make you different from everybody else in our school." Right, because this takes takes place in Nebraska of all places. Who? WTF? I've never been all to the Nebraska corn fields. No hate to the people who live in Nebraska, but I would never go there unless I was banished there like this character was. I'm like, I don't know nothing about Nebraska at all, Mm -hmm. except no one looks like me. (laughs) And this book reinforces it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But you could have had scary ass cornfields in the backwoods of Michigan, hell, or (laughs) Chicago area. (laughs) Or, you know, I don't know. (laughs) Well, I think it had to be a small town because the cops had to be, like, so incompetent and so few of them. And in the book, they call them the National Guard after, like, six murders or something. Like, it's at the very end of the book where they finally call in help. But I don't know. Like, it, it felt weirdly necessary, but also just really fucked up, too. Yeah. So the whole thing was weird. And oh, yeah, there was that other kid that got murdered who was also, what was he? He was something. That kid who got murdered in his oh, like room, his game room. He or whatever. was, was he his, was he Mexican? Yeah, I feel like he was his some Hispanic descent, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, there's one more. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yep. I don't know. Um, Ooh. I thought I have a killings. very go ahead. Go ahead. You go. Oh, I was going to say I have a very lengthy rant about Rodrigo's death in the movie as compared to the book. And like I'm, I can rant. So <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about that because I was going to say I thought the deaths were written pretty well. I felt they were pretty gory and pretty. Um, like the way the killer would move things around and like kind of mm-hmm. fuck with them a little bit before he killed them. I thought that was pretty interesting and genius, actually, just make them paranoid enough to catch them off guard. Mm-hmm. But um, let's talk about his death specifically. What's your rant, Casey? Oh, okay. So here we go. In the movie, they tried to get very political. And for the first two deaths, it was very political. The first guy was homophobic. The second woman was very fucking racist and white supremacist and probably a Nazi. But then Rodrigo, our Latino, our only other person of color, is murdered because he's a pill popper. And I'm using air quotes for the people who can't see me. And he's literally like, yeah, I only take this because I have anxiety. I need to get out of my head. It's my mother's pills. I don't do it that often. But then he's murdered for it. Like, why did you keep his piece of shit? <laughs> why didn't they keep his story from the book? Because in the book, yeah, he was like an online troll going after women yeah. and shit. That made more he sense. He was a total asshole uh, in yeah. the book. And yeah. he even said like sexist, shitty things to people. Yeah. He wasn't portrayed that way at all in the movie. And I was like, yay, I kind of like him. And really, like, that was the point where the movie went from decent to just really fucked up and stupid. Like, that was like, the point happened? where they completely, like, that was, no. <laughs> they lost you. No, they lost me at that point. Because I was like, there's no reason for him to kill Rodrigo. Rodrigo hasn't done anything. Being addicted to pills is a cry for help, and you should help him, not murder him. He's not selling the drugs. No, you do more not, drugs than he does. He's like, not hurting anyone but himself. Exactly. So why so, would that's not a reason? Um, yeah, there was ab- like absolutely no reason for this murder, which makes me think that the murderer is actually racist himself. Which is just, you know, the antithesis of the reasons why he murdered the other two students. Like, what the fuck? 
Yeah. What the fuck? You, if, since you invented all these new characters, you could have killed somebody else off. You could have done something really bad. I, I don't know. Yeah. It was, yeah, that was the turning point. Rodrigo should not have died in the movie. Mm-hmm. He yeah. kind of tried to start redeeming himself in the book. I kind of believe it. I don't know. And he, in the Maybe book, he bit. wasn't really a part of their clique, per se. He was just someone mm. else in the school. Yeah, so. the movie made up a bunch of characters and then shoved them all together. And I was like, I guess for yeah. timing purposes, so you don't have to go mm. out and find all these people. But it was annoying. And then the yeah. one friend, I feel like she's white in the book, but they made her black mm-hmm. on screen. Mm-hmm. She was definitely white in the book because yeah. Makani was the only black yeah. person. But I appreciated that they like at least tried to, you know, diversify a little bit more in the movie. Although her death in the book was shocking. Yeah. I did not expect that. I had to reread that paragraph like a few times to understand that she got her throat slit in like half a second as the murderer was running away yeah how how is this happening (laughs) he's running but then her neck is gone look girl that's the same that's the same thing i got caught up on i'm like wait did she die i'm like wait wait, 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 go back she died she died how did she die he was running away (laughs) he only stabbed this one person in the leg but he like got her entire fucking neck gone what the several of those deaths at the end did not make sense and ollie to skip to the very end he got stabbed multiple times in the back but still lived and that's the thing at the very end i was like wait is she letting us think what we want to think and we think he lived or does she literally mean it's okay and he lived like they were on the ground in the last a, scene. Like, yeah. I think that meant he was alive and okay and going to be fine and they'd all live happily ever after. But he got stabbed I, multiple times. That's why I didn't make sense to killer. Me. I, Yeah. But th- that's why I was like, well, is that supposed to be bittersweet? Like, you know, they didn't really, I don't know. I just thought the boy should have died based on what happened to him. And it just seemed like it would be okay. I'm mm-hmm. like, it is? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. No, it, it it's almost like she killed him off and then maybe her friend or editor or somebody was like, nope, you can't kill. Or maybe even she freaked out at the end. It was like, no, I can't kill him. You know, got to make him alive at the very end. And ta-da, he somehow survived multiple stabbings by a serial killer slash hunter who knows how to kill people and literally just like, murdered and gutted a bunch of people without even really trying to and the whole thing is just like what the fuck what oh the fuck god. oh my god okay <laughs> what, the <Y'all>... fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> yeah that was that was crazy i didn't like the end I... <laughs> I didn't like the end of the movie either me neither oh so... The movie totally changed who the killer was. Mm-hmm. Although, okay, so they tried to make that Uber driver look guilty yeah. and they gave him the same name. It was Dave. Right. And Dave is the killer in the, in the book. book. So you're like, okay. Right. Okay. I think you're super guilty. Like you look really creepy, but you're also guilty. But it turned out to be their white friend who was just angry that he had privilege and that his dad was a Nazi. He was angry that he uh, was failing and he had privilege. And I don't know, maybe he was angry that his dad was a Nazi too, because he could not wait to stick that knife in his daddy. Mm-mm. And then he was mad because his little speech got short, cut short. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the dumbest like, shit ever. It was so dumb. And it made no sense. Mm-mm. Like, okay, so this movie, whoever wrote this movie, They had a strong start. I want to give them credit for that. They had a strong start. Then they killed off Rodrigo and everything just went to shit. Because then they're like, okay, well, we got to make Ollie look super guilty. We got to make Makani, you know, also look super guilty and reveal her big secret. But now we got to wrap everything up in five minutes. Okay, it's over. Yeah. And that's that's the movie. Um, 
It's kind of shitty. Which, it's really shitty. It really is. Like it could have been such a great political statement. Mm-hmm. It could have been so much better. They mm-hmm. could have followed the book a little bit more. Like I'm glad they changed up some stuff, but they could have gone back to the actual content and done a little bit of more with the murderers or the murderer. Yeah. We don't know why this dude killed just because his dad's crazy and white privilege, but the murderer in the book killed because he didn't want people to leave him or leave yeah. the town. Which was weird because he barely knew the people he was killing anyway, like just people he thought that would leave. Like, I mean, they were basically all set to go. Um, Katie, who I felt really bad for Katie in the movie. She became like really fucking racist, but I actually kind of liked her in the book. <laughs> yeah. She was the one who was taking care of her younger siblings, yeah. you know, cooking them dinner. And when she was being murdered, she refused to scream because she didn't want to wake, wake up. the twins. Yeah. That was, so, <laughs> I was like, oh, like, damn, poor girl. she went and down. Like, like, <laughs> I was like, whoa, she bowed it. She like, you're not going to get the best of me. I'm like, wow. She fought back hard. Yeah. yeah. And then died brutally anyway. Yeah. But in the movie, you know, she's this the raging racist psychopath. So I don't know. Like there, there was so much that they could have done with this movie. And yeah. they just didn't. They just didn't. They just didn't. Yeah, there was a lot of changes, not for the better. Mm-mm. They could have kept some more things from the book, I think, and it would have been better. Things. But yeah. also at the same time, I understand them wanting to remove some of the like cute, fluffy stuff that the book had that mm-hmm. made sense to remove. Um, I mean, yeah. OK, so I really appreciated the fact that Ollie like tried to make the puzzle with her grandma it was very boring but it was very cute for them uh-huh. and then when she looks at the puzzle the puzzle is done and she's like it was not fucking done before we went and had sex there's someone in my house right now that was a really shocking moment so i liked that in the book but i understand why they cut it out of the movie yeah i don't think it needs it but you know yeah. All romance authors think it needs for everything needs romance. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Let's talk a little bit about um, the main character, Makani. Mm-hmm. What do you think about her situation? Like, so she ended up being like sent to her grandmother's house by parents that are detached and they fucking hate her, seems like, you know? Yeah, psychologically abusive, emotionally yeah. abusive. They don't want to deal with her, so they just sent mm-hmm. her off. Um, yeah, super fucked up. Yeah. Super it, parenting. And like her mother is the fucking worst thing on the planet because mm-hmm. so what happens, you guys, if you haven't read the book, so it's like this haze night that her varsity swim team does to all the new varsity people. Mm-hmm. And it's this whole thing. They know they do it every year. Parents buy them alcohol for this. Mm-hmm. Parents warn their children when they're coming so they can be dressed cute and be ready. Did Makani's mother say anything? No, the bitch didn't. She let her ass be drug out of there, unawares, looking crazy. What kind of mother are you? A shitty one. A really shitty one. It's a mess. It was. It was really fucked up. The whole thing was really fucked up. And then the bad thing that happened after hours of Basically torture, you know, they're being force fed alcohol, they're yep. having dog food, dog food. Thrown at oh, them, God. Oh. honey poured on them. Mm-hmm. At one point they get Tabasco poured in their eyeballs. Yes. Like all this really nasty shit is happening to them. But then 
Makani takes a knife and cuts her friend's hair off. Yeah. And she's the one who's arrested. Right. So she's the one who has to go in front of the judge. She's the one who gets banished. Just because she cut her hair off. Mm -hmm. She walked her ass into the ocean by herself. But no one went to get her. I think she felt guilty because she didn't attempt to help her. She just mm-hmm. let her walk into the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. But these women or girls were the one scene, you guys, the one scene. I listened to this on audiobook and I swear the narrator was so fucking legit. I'm not playing. When they had the word, the C word, the bitch word and mm-hmm. all that on their foreheads. And they're just like, what's your name, bitch? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Makani, bitch, Drake. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I felt like I was there. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> she was and I had to reread the scene a couple of times to follow what was happening <laughs> and try to figure out why this was so fucked up for Makani, but nobody else Like, none of the adults who bought the alcohol got in trouble. None of the girls literally forcing alcohol down the other girls' throats got in trouble. Right. Pouring tobacco sauce on your eyeballs didn't get you in trouble. Like, there's so much about this whole thing that's fucked up. And yet this one girl who's super drunk, you know, disoriented, tortured, she's the one who's going to jail and in front of the judge. Like they probably this blamed it on right. her, and the team mm-hmm. says it was her. So, mm-hmm. I guess, yes. <sighs> but still, and this was like the worst kept secret. Everyone knew they were doing this every fucking year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is no, I I kept thinking that something worse was going to happen. That she was actually going to push somebody into the fire, or that somebody was going to die, or something like super tragic like that yeah and thankfully they made that the case in the movie she pushed her friend into the fire yeah her friend lived yeah like burns yeah mm -hmm. that would have been like to me that is on purpose cutting someone's beloved hair off yes it is a form of you attacked her Mm -hmm. but you did not drown her so Mm -hmm. i don't know I don't know. Like I, yeah, the whole thing was just it's a mess. I cannot believe people are still doing this shit, even though all the stories and all the, you know, hazing mm-hmm. is scary. And some groups, associations, clubs, whatever, they get real rowdy with this shit like they did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I never joined a sorority, because I don't want to go through hazing. <laughs> like nope i don't want to have tabasco port on my eyeballs i will go read a book about a murderer instead thank you very much you know i got a sorority story but i'm gonna save it i'm gonna save it for another Mm. after show we're not gonna do one today i don't think but i'm gonna save it for a patreon you don't want to miss that story time yes it would be a good one and it's gonna match this book But nobody died and no one drowned. Oh, good. And good. no one was set on fire. So, yay. <laughs> yeah, no, the whole time, you know, in the book, she's like, oh my God, I'm so guilty. I did this terrible thing. I deserve to be banished. I deserve yeah. to be murdered because I'm a terrible person. And like, I understand depression and anxiety lie to you. And, you know, the whole world turns on you, and makes you feel like a really bad person. Parents treat you like shit. Like, I understand that. Yeah. But also as a reader, I felt very let down. Like, this is That's it. all you did? Yeah. That's all you did? And Man, I mean, I was she like, was really mad at that. She was really mad at her. That's supposed to be her girl. And you didn't, she's <laughs> like, well, you, we just text each other. You didn't say shit to me. And you mm-hmm. know my mother is bad with this kind of stuff. You didn't say not one word. You got me out mm-hmm. here looking dumb too. That's how she felt. Yeah. And I, don't I don't blame her. her. But I'm yeah. like... <laughs> You acting like you just murdered someone, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was definitely acting like she had murdered somebody and deserved to be murdered, too. And I was yeah. like, why? And the this town was acting like she weak. was the ringleader. Like, she's the ringleader of the thing. Like, what the hell? No. 
What is this garbage? No, you, you didn't plan any of this. No. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that was in the book. It was weak. I was really that was the one thing I was really glad they changed for the movie mm-hmm. was that she actually pushed her friend to blue fire because that's like, yeah, that's really fucked up and awful. And even though it was an accident, still like that could be like manslaughter up. or something if she mm-hmm. died. Like you, mm-hmm. you didn't premeditate it, but shit, that was lethal. You killed somebody. Yep. Oh. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was that was like the one thing the, the movie got right that yeah. I appreciated that they changed. And I did not like how, like in the book, I did kind of like that showdown between the killer. And her and Ollie in the house Mm -hmm. and his ass was naked running around. (laughs) And then the grandmother bust in and jump on the guy's back. I'm like, man, Mm -hmm. that's cool. They didn't do none of that in the movie. No. I, yeah. The grandma had a really decent character arc in the book. Mm -hmm. You know, she attacks the fucking killer. She has to go to the hospital. But does she get anything in the movie? No, no, you forget about her after like two seconds. Yeah. Which I didn't like. I'm like, man, that was a goal. Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't want to see a grandma jump on the killer's back while this naked dude running around? <laughs> that could Again, have been like, good TV. <laughs> they decided to make Ollie look really fucking suspicious in the movie. Yeah. And then ended it without yeah. explaining anything. Like, why was he arrested? Right. Why was he let go if they arrested him? What was happening? Mm-hmm. You know, in the movie, he knew exactly what she had done and how terrible she was and, you know, her real last name and all of this stuff. In the book, he was super cute and blushing and going like, yeah, I did Google <laughs> you, but I didn't find anything. I know, right? And he was much cuter in the book. I feel like the book was much cuter in the book. Yeah. Yeah, like I, there's this guy I follow on TikTok who dresses up like Peter Pan, and he's basically what I pictured Ollie as. And I'm like, you're just so cute. I just want to print your cheeks. <laughs> like, yeah, no, he was super cute in the book. Mm-hmm. And then in the movie, they're like, no, we got to make him look like a scarecrow. We got to make him look really evil. We got to make him super suspicious. But no, nope, no, nope, he's not suspicious anymore. We got to. Yeah. solved a case in two minutes oh my god i driving through a cornfield that's on fire just in certain areas right but not the rest of it because <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> i'm that i'm sorry this was just like not good on both fronts so i would, would not <laughs> sorry i picked would it would not <laughs> But if you're gonna do it, I definitely recommend the audiobook. I'm not playing. Bonnie Turbin is so freaking good as a narrator. She has that's won awesome. awards. She's so damn good. And it delivers. That scene, that's where I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to go listen to that scene because on paper it just felt so flat. And I was like, wait, what's happening? I don't know. <laughs> When is the murder coming? Oh, wait, there's no murder. Okay. No murder. <laughs> she that whole scene is like, so oh, she's going to stab her friend. No, 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 it's just the hair. That whole scene is them just getting completely wasted and being forced to have drinks. Like if they answer to mm-hmm. any other name than the name written on their forehead. And McCannies was bitch. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I so, mean, like probably got alcohol poisoning yeah. with all of the shots that they were being forced to take Mm -hmm. and they weren't eating any food with Mm -hmm. all of this alcohol they were having dog food thrown on them and honey poured in their hair again the tabasco sauce in their eyeballs like why why would you do that why why would you torture your (sighs) teammates like this at all this the the whole thing is just super fucked it is i don't like it Mm -mm. i'm like uh I wish she had done something more serious in the book, but yeah, like all these reviews, some of them were tricked to me because you know, I did scroll Mm -hmm. through some of the reviews. Mm -hmm. These are fangirls and boys, I'm telling you. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A couple of people didn't like it. A couple of people who actually read horror and enjoy horror, they, they're the ones that didn't like it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I typically don't read horror or thriller, but I, even I was like, okay, there's a lot lacking here. There's just a lot that oh, yeah. needs to be fixed. Oh, yeah, there was a lot. Or changed or rewritten. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who wrote the movie script, but come on, guys. I think it was two dudes, actually. Oh, God. Of course it was. <laughs> Are they white dudes? Are they complaining about their privilege? I don't know. Let's see. Um, yeah, I feel like I just got finished. You know, I watched it yesterday. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who is it? Because I was looking to see who did the screenplay of it. And of course, um, Henry Gaiden did the screenplay. Don't know him. Yeah, I don't know him either. Mm. I don't know. I did recognize the lady who played Makani, though. She's been in stuff. She was in The Walking Dead. Yeah, she was in The Walking Dead for a hot minute. Mm-hmm. Um, look her up. She was in The Perfectionist mm-hmm. for a hot minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she yeah she was in The Walking Dead for three seasons. Wow, I barely remembered her. She was in the <laughs> she was in the one um, Oceanside group that just fucking disappeared. It's funny if you watch listen to my other <laughs> podcast where we talk about The Walking Dead. Um, my co-host over there, Lisa, and I always talk about what the fuck happened to Oceanside. That whole group just disappeared. <laughs> Well, now they're here in Nebraska getting murdered. Apparently. Mm. A mess. Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm like, why she looks so familiar? Well, duh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's rate the book and then let's rate the movie. Mm-hmm. Do you want to go first or do you want me to here, go first? I'll go first. Okay. Why not? So the book... As I said, I felt like it was a long start, a slow mm-hmm. start, pretty close to a snooze fest for a while. And then the mm-hmm. killer just shows up and then things get interesting after that. But the motivation, like we talked about the motivation of Michaela, like her reasoning mm-hmm. didn't really click. Um, I don't know. None of it just gelled for me. I thought it was OK. Mm-hmm. I would never recommend it. So for that, I'm going to rate it a two out of five. Mm-hmm. the adaptation that shit was fucking awful <laughs> it was awful i don't yeah. think i liked anything really about it i turned it on i was watching it i'm like is it almost over <laughs> yeah you start it and then it's over like the, yeah. it's too short yeah so i'm gonna actually give the movie one out of five i think the book was a little yeah. bit better Although mm-hmm. I did like how the movie cut some stuff out, mm-hmm. but for the story as a whole, they should have taken more from the book instead of switching yeah. shit all completely around completely. Yeah. So there you go. What do you say, Casey? So I'm just a little bit nicer. I was going to rate the book three stars. If I could give it half, it'd be two and a half, but I'll round up because I enjoyed it. Like it was decent it wasn't the best i'm never gonna recommend it maybe i should give it two stars because of that but i just it's fine it wasn't the worst thing i've ever read i've read much much worse but eh. so three stars but then the movie absolutely worse than the book two stars all the way because again i feel like it had a solid start and if they had kept that momentum up if they kept it really fucking actually political instead of the bullshit they pulled if they hadn't killed off Rodrigo if you know I really liked that Makani pushed her friend into the fire I thought that was great if they had given any sort of middle or ending to this movie it could have been better two stars meh you, like, you it, have it just... it. she was generous I was not <laughs> Yeah, like I I hope we get more book adaptations that are good. I hope we get more diverse characters. 
you know, there was a trans character in this book who didn't die. Yay. But they had to have a gay character who kind of mostly died. Maybe he got stabbed in the stomach. So who knows? Maybe he's alive. Maybe he's dead. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. Didn't he didn't he go to NASA or something? He got to NASA program. That was the transgender. I'm yeah. talking about the the gay guy who was beaten up by the football team. Oh, he yeah. later got stabbed in the stomach, but I don't know if he lived or died because mm-hmm. you know they don't tell mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yes, we can yeah. guess he lived because we said so. he lived. Yeah, okay, all the gay <laughs> people lived. It's fine. Now, if you're curious about something that is actually good, I'm just going to throw this out there. It's not an adaptation that I know about, but I literally just finished watching this on Netflix a couple of hours ago, and it's freaking good. It's called Hypnotic. Ooh, It's freaking good. It's about, now that is a real suspense story. Uh About this woman who goes to a therapist who um, talks her into uh, hypnotherapy. And then suddenly she is losing memory. Like she is losing bits of time. What's happening in that time? Is he doing something to you while you were in hypnotherapy? What is it? (laughs) It was good. It was uh, very suspenseful. And I'm like, wow, what? Uh, so easy to make a, a suspenseful movie, apparently. Mm-hmm. But some people just Not don't these people. <laughs> Fun fact, I have been hypnotized, but I always remember everything that happens. Really? Yeah. Wow. Maybe we'll do a, a bonus. I think so. I feel diff- like I can go into it later. We'll do a bonus episode where you talk about um, your sorority and I'll talk about my hypnotherapy. Okay, but... Join us on Patreon so you don't miss out. We'll probably yes. do it soon so we don't forget. <laughs> It'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be fun. Wow. Okay. I got to hear all about that. I'm looking forward to it. All right, you guys. I think we're done for today. What do you think, Casey? I think we're done. I think we roasted this book. Boy. Again, I'm so sorry that I'm picking all these really terrible books and movies and shit. I mean, it wasn't, it was bad, but I, like I said, the narrator saved it for, she saved it and gave me, Good. gave it two. I would have gave a one if it wasn't for the narrator. That's Good, I'm glad, I'm glad she saved it for you. But, um, not by much still, it's a two, two's not good. <laughs> two star. Whatever, it is what it is, y'all. So um, we'll see you in the next episode. We'll be back with something else bookish next month. And don't forget us on the fantasy series. We're still doing that. Yes. So read along with us. Join us on Shelf Addiction Official or over on the Book Clubs app with a Z. The links are in the show notes. We'll catch you next time. And until then, happy reading. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction Official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction Podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.